It is not necessary to know every rule for commas, and not even all grammar guides even have all the rules. In many cases, using a comma is simply a matter of preference. This lesson will explain the basic comma rules and help you to develop an intuitive sense of where commas go and how they affect the sentence. When two independent sentences are joined by a fanboy's conjunction, place a comma before the conjunction. Remember, an independent sentence is one that contains a subject and a verb. If a sentence contains a fanboy's conjunction, ask yourself if what comes before and after your conjunction is a complete sentence. But remember, in order for it to be a complete sentence, it must have a subject and a verb. If so, place your comma before your conjunction. Let's look at a quick example. Some toy dolls promote unrealistic body images among young girls, yet toy companies continue to market these products without restraint. The conjunction here is yet. Look at what comes before yet. Is some toy dolls promote unrealistic body images among young girls a complete sentence? Yes. Now look at what comes after yet. Is Toy companies continue to market these products without restraint, a complete sentence? Yes, again. Therefore, place a comma before yet, like this. Here are some sentences for you to practice. Some are incorrect and some are correct. Pause your screen when the sentences appear, and then press play when you're ready to see the corrections. Remember, look for a fanboys and then check to see if what comes before is a complete thought. Now that we know what to do with a sentence with an independent clause and a fanboys, let's look at commas with dependent clauses. You can think of a dependent clause as a part of a sentence that depends on another part of a sentence in order for it to make sense. So when a sentence begins with a dependent clause, use a comma to separate it from the rest of the sentence. Here are some words that always begin dependent clauses. These dependent clause words tell you that the sentence will need a comma. Notice how dependent clause words make the sentence need more information to complete a thought. Look at these dependent clauses. Dependent clauses do not form a complete thought. These incomplete clauses are often what makes sentence fragments, which we will talk about more in the lesson on fragments. Dependent clauses can be in the form of an introductory phrase, or a phrase that introduces the sentence. Place the comma between the introductory thought, the dependent clause, and the completing thought, the independent clause, like so. You can see here that when it is hot outside is a dependent clause, while I like to eat ice cream is an independent clause. Therefore, the comma goes between the two phrases. Now, more sentences for you to practice with. Identify the dependent clauses or dependent clause words and independent clauses in order to know where to put your comma. Feel free to rewind your video and review any of the rules if you're unsure of an answer. Remember, not all of these sentences are incorrect. Press pause until you are ready to resume the lesson. We mentioned introductory words earlier and how they begin dependent clauses. Introductory words usually indicate a transition or comment on a following sentence. Introductory words are almost always followed by a comma. So here are some common introductory words. Introductory words will not always require a comma when beginning a sentence. You must decide whether the word is functioning as an introductory word or as a core part of the sentence. Remember. Introductory words either introduce, transition, or comment on the rest of the sentence.
Here are some examples of how some of the introductory words could be used as a core part of the sentence and not to introduce comment or transition, in which case they do not require a comma. Now let's see how you do with these practice sentences. Remember to press pause for the sentences and the corrections. Don't get confused with introductory words and introductory phrases. Introductory phrases are simply a phrase that does the exact same thing as introductory words. It either introduces, transitions, or comments on the rest of the sentence. Like introductory words, introductory phrases also require a comma directly afterward. Here are some examples of some introductory phrases. Try to get a feel for the pause in the following sentences with introductory phrases. You can think of introductory phrases as dependent clauses, which also require a comma. However, introductory phrases are different because you do not need a fanboys right after your comma, as with dependent clauses. Try these sentences for practice. Introductory phrases are not the only dependent clauses that can be added on a sentence. Follow-up elements are phrases or groups of words attached to a sentence, like an afterthought. These usually come after a complete thought, rather than before, and are sometimes short follow-up questions. Let's look at some examples. You should put a comma before a phrase at the end of a sentence that serves as an afterthought. Notice how an afterthought is not a complete thought. It is often a comment, opinion, or question tacked on to a complete sentence. Determine if the following sentences need a comma and where you should put it. Thank you for watching. For practice worksheets or additional questions, please visit the BYU-Idaho Writing Center website.